All right, we're going to keep looking at circle properties. So we've got a new one here. I'm going to go through three different ways of looking at this before I kind of fully define it. So here I've got a chord AB, and I've said if I can find the midpoint of that chord, okay, so I've got my ruler here. It looks like this chord is about 10 centimeters long. So I'm going to find the middle of 10 centimeters. So that would take us to 5 centimeters. So I'll make a little mark at 5 centimeters. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw from the midpoint of that line. And I'm going to draw to the center of the circle. So just give me a second here. We'll adjust the ruler so that we can get from that purple dot that we made to the center of the circle. And it looks like, okay, here we go. So we'll draw now from the center down to that dot that we had made, okay? And what that gives us, there we go, okay? What that gives us now, if I move my ruler out of the way, it looks like I've made something here that's a nice 90 degree angle. So let's take a protractor and we'll see. So I'll put the protractor down here, tip it, and it looks like, when I get it lined up with my orange cord there, there we go, it looks like this goes right through that 90 degree line, right? From the orange to the purple, it makes a 90 degree angle. Okay, so I'm gonna fill this in. If I have a cord and I find the midpoint of the cord, I draw from the center of the circle to that midpoint on the cord, I create a 90 degree angle. Okay, let's look at this. We'll do something different here. So this one says, if I have a chord and I can find the midpoint of the chord, so we'll do that again. Okay, so I'll go my chord this time is, looks like 12 centimeters long from the uh, edge of the circle to the other side. So it's six, so we'll make my arm mark there. Okay, so we found the midpoint of the chord and then we're gonna make a 90 degree angle from the midpoint of that chord. So I'll bring my protractor out here, line it up on my orange line, and also on that purple dot that we had just made on the center of the line. There we go. Okay, and my line, if I was to draw that line, if I bring it up here, make it 90 degrees, look at that, as it's 90, it goes right through the center of the circle, okay? So I'm gonna fill that in. If I have a chord and we can find the midpoint and then make a 90 degree angle from that midpoint, my line will cut through or will go through the center of the circle. Okay, all right. So one last one here. So if I have a chord and I draw from the center of the circle to the chord, Okay, so I'm going to be going from the center of the circle down to the chord, and I make sure that I'm cutting it at a 90 degree angle. So I'm going to use both things at once here. So I'm going to line this up so that I'm going to get 90 degrees from the chord. Okay, and I just have to tilt this a little bit. 90 degrees from the chord and the center of the circle. Okay, oh, these things are so finicky. Let's see. Okay, so I got my 90 degree, you can see the dot of the center of the circle is right on the 90 degree line. So I'm gonna take my ruler now and line it up with that dot. And you can see it's lined up with my 90 degree line. Okay, so I'm gonna take my purple, draw from the center of the circle here, down to my cord. All right, and now I've made a 90 degree angle with that cord. Okay, so I went from the center, made a 90 degree angle to the cord, and I'm going to bring this ruler up now, and we'll see that my cord was originally, looks like six centimeters long, and this line is hitting right on the midpoint of that cord. So it's split it into two equal parts, where this side here on the left would be three centimeters, and this side would be three centimeters on the right. Okay, and so what we've been doing with all of these things is we've been talking about something called perpendicular bisectors. Okay, so perpendicular bisectors do three things. A perpendicular bisector is going to meet a cord at a 90 degree angle. It is going to cut the cord in half and it's also going to go through the center of the circle. Okay, 
So all of that is actually in the name. So perpendicular, okay, you might remember this back from grade six, perpendicular does mean meeting at a 90 degree angle. So you looked at perpendicular and you would have talked about it like this, okay, where it means making a 90 degree angle. The bisector part, so if you think about bi, like bicycle or binomials that we talked about earlier in the year, that prefix bi means two, right? And then sector means sections. So we've found something that splits it into two sections. So perpendicular, 90 degrees, and a bisector means splitting it into two equal parts, okay? Now, the reason I did all three of those examples, and I did them all separately, was to show you that if any two of these three things are true, the third one also has to be true, okay? So the first one we did, it said we had a chord, we found the midpoint, so we found exactly halfway. We went from the center of the circle to the midpoint, right? So we cut the chord in half, we went through the center of the circle to that uh, midpoint, and what happened was we created that 90 degree angle. So if any of these two things are true, the third one is going to be true as well. Chances are because a lot of what we're going to be doing is looking to find side lengths of triangles within circles, most of the time we're going to be using this. So we're going to see that something's cut in half and it goes through the center of the circle and that's going to give us our 90 degree angle which is going to help us find our missing side lengths. Okay? Alright, so one of the things we can do with that is you might be asked to just be given a random circle and asked to find the center of that circle. Okay? And so this would have been a problem that would have been quite difficult a long time ago until they figured out how to work with these things. So I'm going to just use my ruler here. I'm going to make a chord. And I'm going to make this chord. It looks like I'm pretty good. I've got about 8 centimeters for this chord. Okay. And so I'll go halfway in between, which is at 4 centimeters. Okay. So there's my first uh, chord. And I'm going to go from that chord now. And I'm going to draw 90 degrees out from there. Okay. Uh, Let's see, I think I have it here. I should have put my cord on the other side. I wouldn't have needed to rotate my protractor. Oh well. All right, here we go. It looks like I'm lined up there. And let's see, get it right on the dot. Okay, perfect. And so we'll go back to blue. And I'm going to go to my 90 degree mark up here. No, that's not 90 degrees. Come on. There we go. Okay. So there's my 90 degree mark. Okay. And I'm going to cheat a little bit because I can use this here to help me know that I'm about 90 degrees. Oops. We'll move the protractor out of here. And then we'll go like this with our color red. And there we go. Now, because I have made a chord, I cut it in half, so I know both sides are equal, right? We said both sides are four centimeters. That means that at some point, this line, this red line, is going through the middle of the circle, because I drew a 90 degree angle, right? So I have two of the things. I've got the 90 degree angle, I've cut the chord in half, so I know that my line must go through the center of the circle. The problem is, the center really could be anywhere along this red line. So I need to do the exact same thing, but again, with a different chord. Okay? So one thing to caution you on, don't make your chord look exactly the same on the other side of the circle. If I do another one, you can see here maybe 60 degrees, I've tilted my ruler. If I do that again, I'm going to get the exact same line, it's not going to work. Okay, so I'm going to pick somewhere else on the circle. I'll make another chord. So I'll make a different one. I'll do this one here. We'll call this here. We'll do this one red. And if I go from that corner to this corner, that's oh, 10 centimeters. Sorry, it went a little bit far there. But I'll go halfway in between at 5 centimeters. Okay, 
And then I would take my protractor and I would tilt it here. Mm, there we go. And so that I've got a nice 90 degree angle out from there. And I'm going to swing my ruler down here so that we've got, we can make our nice 90 degree angle line. Okay. And I'll make this one blue. Okay. And here we go. So again, I've made another 90 degree angle. I've got another perpendicular bisector, right? Because it cuts the cord in half. It's meeting at a 90 degree angle. So this blue line must also go through the center of the circle. And since both this red line and the blue line must go through the center of the circle, the center of the circle must be where those two lines intersect. Okay, so now I've found the center of the circle, uh, and that's exactly where the center would be. Now you don't need to use those two chords specifically. You can pick any two chords, as long as they're not directly across from each other. Okay. Right, so where is this really being used? So for us, what we're going to be seeing a lot is something like uh, the radius of the circle CD is bisecting the chord AB. And we know the radius measures 10 centimeters, so maybe I'll fill that in. I know that measurement is 10 centimeters. Uh, what is the distance of C to E? So I'm looking for what is this distance here from C to E? Okay. Well, uh, what is important here is I'm told that my radius CD that's helpful because I know that that means it's coming from the center of the circle and it is bisecting the cord so I know that it's cutting this cord in half since that line comes from the center of the circle and it's cutting that cord in half I now have a 90 degree angle Okay. Now, the other piece of information we were told was the whole distance from B to A was 16 centimeters. Okay. So I know that the whole line is 16. If each part is cut into half, then each part is now 8 centimeters. So what we're looking for from C to E is really now that green line is the third side in a 90 degree triangle. So what I'm going to do to solve is I'm going to be working with a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, I already have c squared because if I look at my 90 degree angle, the side opposite is the hypotenuse. So I already have the hypotenuse, so I'm just going to switch my formula around so that I'm working with c squared minus b squared equals a squared. So I've got 10 squared minus 8 squared is equal to... Um, a squared, and that's 100 minus 64 is a squared, so that's 36 is a squared, and since a squared is 36, when we take the square root on both sides, we get that a must be 6 centimeters. So the distance from c to e ends up being 6 centimeters. Okay, now a better question for me to have asked at the beginning would have been, what is the distance instead of from C to E? The better question would have been to ask, what is the distance from E to D? Because that one is a little less straightforward. I still would need to do all the exact same work that we just did, but then I would need to say, since the whole thing from C to D was a radius and was 10, if this portion from C to E is 6, the remaining portion must be 4. Okay, so that would be a better way of making that question a little bit more complicated. So really all we're doing is we're finding 90 degree angles and then using those side lengths to find